I've, I feel uh, internally that I am an ordinary person who's had an extraordinary life, and therefore I wanted to find out what were there, uh, what influences over and above my own contribution made up the mix. And I think uh, my, my parents were one important factor. I think Providence was another. Mm -hmm. I think serendipity was yet another. But, you know, you make it very clear in Measure of a Man that your foundation, the essence of who you were as a person, was formed in those early days on Cat Island. Yes. Yes. And you, you mentioned in the book where a friend had asked you recently, what did you think of yourself when you looked in the mirror? And your response was? I told him, first of all, there were no mirrors in our house. Uh, the only way I saw a reflection of myself was in pond water <laughs> or in a piece of broken glass from a rum bottle. Uh, I had no frame of reference because there were no white people on the island except two. Two. But they were, uh, their presence n represented neither oppression or power. Who were they? They were just two people, one a doctor and one a small shopkeeper. So I, my answer was I never had an occasion to compare my color with anything else. Therefore, I only saw myself as what I was, a human being. Mm -hmm. uh, so really, I have felt this for years, that when you say that line in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, when you're speaking to the man who plays your father, the character, your father, those are your words, basically. Yes. You see yourself as a colored man, I see myself as a man. Yes. Because color was not a part of your upbringing. It was not. Uh, when I got to, to Nassau, which was ten and a half years later, mm -hmm. on Cat Island, I spent ten and a half years in that semi-primitive community. I went to Nassau at the age of ten and a half. Semi-primitive, meaning you, you tell the story of your mother gathering stones and chopping the stones and selling thousands of pounds of stones for gravel for four dollars a... Was it four dollars a pound? Or? No, a pound, yeah. my okay. dear. It was six dollars a ton. Oh. <laughs> What my mother used to do, she would go into the forest and find stones, sometimes as much as 50 pounds, 30 pounds, uh, larger still, and she would bring them home. And she would sit under an almond tree with a great big broad straw hat on her head, and she would pound that stone into smaller stones, and then the smaller stones into gravel. She would use a hammer. And from morning to night, she would pound small stones into tiny bits of gravel until she would have a mound reaching almost to the ceiling of our little house. And a guy would come by once every three or four months because that's how long it took her to accumulate this pile of stones. Mm. So that's where you come from? That's where I come from. You, you speak um, on page 100, I think it is, about your father, one of the great lessons he gave to you was about being the measure of a man. What is the measure of a man? Well, in my opinion? father's point of view was the measure of a man is how well he cares for his children. And uh, that stayed with me. Of course, it put a heavy burden on me because I subsequently had six children. <laughs> <laughs> All daughters. All daughters? Yeah, all daughters. All daughters. I have uh, six daughters and I have five grandchildren. Wow. 